So, we have learned about the four kinds of reactions, combination, decomposition, single replacement and double replacement. And that's one way to categorize reactions. But there is another way as well, depending on what happens within the reaction. And one class of reactions is precipitation reactions. What exactly does the word precipitation mean? Have you ever used the word before? Precipitate? Normally when uh, humidity reaches 100%, we say that precipitation will happen, meaning water will come down from the clouds in the form of rain. That's a precipitate. But in chemistry, when you have two test tubes, each test tube contains a solution. A particular compound might be dissolved in test tube 1 in whatever uh, solvent you have. And in test tube 2, you have another compound dissolved. Now, both of them are dissolved. And the thing about solution is that you should be able to see through a solution. It should be clear. It may have some color, but it should be clear. It should not be foggy. That's what, it, uh, that's what tells you that some solute, some component is dissolved in it. Now, when you mix both the test tubes in one beaker, for example, suddenly you may see something coming out becoming cloudy making the mixture cloudy now you cannot see through it and if you give it a few minutes or more eventually all that cloudiness would settle down in the form of some solid originally there was no solid in each test tube but now there is and that's a precipitate so that's a class of reaction where you have two solutions when mixed together produce some insoluble product, which is called a precipitate. And uh, it would be very helpful if we know when a particular substance is going to form a precipitate or not. Here we have solubilities of some common ionic compound. It's a chart and you don't have to memorize this chart. This chart would be provided to you. But here is what it's saying. Let's try to read this chart. On the first, on the top portion, you have compounds which are soluble on the left with exceptions on the right. So all compounds that contain alkali metal ions, alkali metals are group 1A metals such as lithium 1 plus, sodium 1 plus, potassium 1 plus, rubidium 1 plus and cesium 1 plus or contain ammonium ion, a polyatomic cation. So if you have lithium chloride or lithium uh, hydroxide, lithium sulfite, lithium phosphite or anything that starts with lithium or any of the others, all of those compounds will forever remain soluble. They will never form precipitates. That's what this means. There are no exceptions. Similarly, all compounds which contain nitrates, bicarbonates and chlorates are also always soluble. So if I have uh, calcium nitrate, do I know if it's soluble? Yes. Why? Because anything that's bound to nitrate will be soluble. It will not turn into solid and precipitate. It will remain dissolved in your solvent. And the solvent we are talking about, by the way, is water. So it will remain aqueous here. Similarly, anything that's bound to bicarbonate, any of the metals, we already know that lithium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, or all of those are soluble thanks to the lithium part or the sodium part. We don't need to come down here to the second row and check it out whether bicarbonates are soluble or not. And what if I had strontium bicarbonate? or iron bicarbonate, cobalt bicarbonate. Would those ionic compounds be soluble? Yes, as long as they are bound to bicarbonate. And the same is true for chlorate. Now be very careful, nitrates are, all nitrates are soluble, not, but not all nitrites. So if I ask, 
whether calcium nitrite is soluble or not well you don't know that because so far we haven't seen any information on nitrites neither have we seen any information on calcium now here all halides such as chlorides bromides iodides are soluble with the exceptions of silver versions mercury and lead what does that mean that means if you have silver chloride or silver bromide or silver iodide they are insoluble they will precipitate if you have mercury chloride mercury bromide or mercury iodide similarly they are insoluble and finally we have lead chloride lead bromide and lead iodide are also insoluble they will not press they will not uh, remain soluble they will not be in the aqu aqueous phase as we will see through a balanced equation but the rest of the chlorides bromides and iodides are soluble so if you have magnesium chloride it should be soluble if you have magnesium bromide or magnesium iodide it should be as long as magnesium is not included in this list on the right for exceptions it is soluble sulfates all sulfates are soluble except for silver sulfate calcium sulfate strontium sulfate barium sulfate mercury sulfate and lead sulfate so the table is very easy to understand finally on the second portion the bottom portion of the table you have the compounds which are always insoluble with some exceptions when they are soluble carbonates phosphates chromates and sulfides are insoluble except when combined with group 1a metals alkali metals or ammonium so if i had lithium carbonate and i come down here and check out that carbonate should be insoluble but wait it contains lithium on it too so that's where this exception tells you that all of this five metals plus ammonium if they are combined with any of these four it will make them soluble similarly hydroxides are insoluble unless they are combined with the group 1a metals or barium okay barium hydroxide is soluble uh, lithium hydroxide sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide rubidium hydroxide and cesium hydroxide what if you are given some compound which cannot be verified through this list uh, that's when you don't have to worry about it uh, there are for lists out there that uh, document the solubilities of compounds but anything that you would be asked to uh, tell the solubility of would come from this list so now let's look at some equations uh, some chemical equations which tell us exactly how this is applicable how to how to apply that table table 4.1 here is a reaction let's say you have one test tube in that test tube you have water and in that water you have dissolved lead nitrate notice in parenthesis here it says aq aq means aqueous a q u e o u s aqueous that means it's soluble now I could go back and check on that table whether lead nitrate is listed as a soluble compound and here all nitrates are soluble with no exceptions hence lead nitrate so should be soluble then sodium chloride also aqueous sodium chloride all chlorides are soluble with the exceptions of silver mercury or lead but so sodium chloride should be soluble and that's why we see aq for aqueous now we know how to write their formulas lead is 2 plus nitrate is 1 minus and you crisscross those numbers you get pb parenthesis no3 2 sodium is 1 plus chlorine is 1 minus you get nacl and you have to balance the equation what you have here is a balanced equation and this is also while being a precipitation reaction is also one of the other four kinds of reactions when we looked at single displacement or single replacement double replacement combination and decomposition which one is this of those four if you thought of double replacement then you are right lead is replacing nitrate with chlorine to make lead chloride and sodium is replacing chlorine or chloride with nitrate to make sodium nitrate so a double replacement happens in fact uh, most of the precipitation reactions we will look at are double replacement for reactions as well 
So lead goes with chlorine and sodium goes with nitrate. Now PBCl2, you don't just copy over PB and Cl and write this as PBCl. You have to know that PB had a 2 plus charge. Chloride will always have a 1 minus charge. When you crisscross them, you get PBCl2. You need to do that first before you even balance the equation. Then what about sodium nitrate? Sodium has a charge of 1 plus. Nitrate always has a charge of 1 minus. When you crisscross them, you get NaNO3. And that's what you see here. Now, after you crisscross and put the uh, names or rather the formulas of the new compounds that form, you can balance the equation now. And when you balance this correctly, you will get 1 PbNO3 2 plus 2 NaCl giving you 1 PbCl2 and 2 NaNO3. When you balance this out and you make that table, you should have four species, reaction species, lead, nitrate, NO3. Keep it all together. Keep the polyatomic ions together. They usually stick together. Sodium, then chlorine. Okay, so those four are there. Now, the last part that remains is, how do I know this is solid? And how do I know this is aqueous? When you start this reaction, you already know both of these are aqueous because otherwise this reaction will not happen. You take two test tubes where clearly they are transparent, so you know they are aqueous. They have their solutes, their salts dissolved. But when you mix them, either both of them will precipitate or one of them will precipitate or none of them would precipitate. If it doesn't, if neither of them precipitates, you would have AQ in here for both of them. If both of them precipitates, you would have S for solid for both of them. And what the most likely case is, one of them will precipitate as you see here. So we need to know that lead chloride is pre a precipitate. So we know that when we look over here, that chlorides are, are soluble except if they are one of these three. And lead chloride is one of them. So it should sorry it should precipitate lead chloride similarly sodium nitrate sodium nitrate all nitrates are soluble with no exceptions and also all compounds containing sodium are soluble so no exceptions there by the way this is all for ionic compounds not for molecular or covalent compounds and the precipitation reactions have to do with ionic compounds where they exchange their partners so this is our equation, the final version. And we found out S and AQ here by looking at this table, the table of solubility or the chart of solubility of common ionic compounds. So here are two reactions that you should try. Potassium chloride plus silver nitrate. Originally they are aqueous, but still verify in that particular table on your slide whether it should be AQ or not. Now, when you mix them, what happens? Similarly, when you mix this two, what happens? Pause the video and tell me what happens. And I will tell you now what happens. Potassium will go with nitrate to form potassium nitrate. Silver will go with chloride to form silver chloride. What will be the formula of that co those compounds? And what are the formulas of these two compounds? What is the formula of potassium chloride? What's the formula of silver nitrate? Pause the video and figure that out. And let's see. I will not be writing it here, but potassium chloride is, potassium is K1 plus, chloride is 1 minus, that's KCl. Silver and nitrate. Silver is Ag1 plus, nitrate is 1 minus, that makes it AgNO3. Now, when silver goes with chlorine or chloride, it's silver with 1 plus and chloride with 1 minus, that should be AgCl. And when potassium goes with nitrate, uh, nitrate with 1 minus and potassium with 1 plus, it should be AgNO3. And uh, I will leave it up to you to figure out if there is any precipitate. Is silver chloride a precipitate? Is potassium nitrate a precipitate? Don't forget to balance the equation as well and do the same thing with the second equation here. 
and uh, in the next video what we will do with precipitation reactions is to write something known as ionic equations and net ionic equations.